The best estimates that are that there are at least 400,000 people in the United States who have MS, and that works out to roughly one in every 700 people or so. So it's a fairly prevalent disease. It also tends to strike people in early adulthood, so most people developing their first symptoms in their 20s or 30s, really when they're in the primes of their lives. Well, I think there's um, a general lack of understanding of what MS or multiple sclerosis is. Uh, people often confuse it with muscular dystrophy, which is a completely different disorder. Um, I think that um, MS is one of those conditions that's popular enough that many people know somebody with the disease and oftentimes they might know somebody with the disease because it's uh, not gone well and it's caused them obvious neurologic problems like walking difficulty or perhaps even the need for a wheelchair. And the reality is that most people with MS uh, who are, are out there um, dealing with effects of the disease but you would never know it simply by, uh, by looking at them or talking to them. And so I think uh, what often helps people is just an understanding that although they, uh, if you know they have the disease, that although they may look like they're doing well on the surface, they, uh, they still need understanding as they struggle with a lot of these issues. There's growing evidence that general health has a big impact on how MS behaves and how people are able to cope with the disease. So things like exercise, um, lifestyle habits, avoiding obesity, um, not smoking cigarettes, those sorts of things probably also have a meaningful impact on the disease. So when we treat people, we counsel them about uh, all aspects of treatment. But I think lifestyle does play an important role in treating established MS. Now this is where the science lags behind quite a bit. If you compare it to uh, the drug therapies we have, those drug therapies are approved because they were very rigorously tested in studies. And so we know uh, that they work and we know how well they work. We know that there's a genetic component to multiple sclerosis risk. So in other words, the pattern of genes that we're born with does provide us with some type of baseline risk for getting the disease. Perhaps we could conceptualize that as anywhere from no risk to a very high risk. We also know that the genetic component is not enough that something has to happen, probably multiple things, relatively early in life that trigger the disease, allow it to happen in this susceptible person. And the leading candidates for those triggers are viruses of different types. There's tremendous interest in um, repair. So for people that have established MS and we've managed to successfully keep it quiet, can we fix damage that they've already accrued? And so um, one can conceptualize a lot of different approaches to this and a, a popular approach that people have thought of is the use of stem cell therapy, which is in early days in MS and in neurologic disease in general. But these are reasons to be very hopeful for the future of MS treatment and prevention.